Republican presidential candidate Tim Scott going into the liberal lion's den and clashing with the ladies of The View. It comes after enduring weeks of racially charged attacks from some of the show's co-hosts. He came out and did that dog whistle, mm -hmm. victimhood. As soon as you say that, you know what he's talking about. I didn't like that. He seems to think because I made it, everyone can make it. Ignoring, again, the fact that he is the exception and not the rule. And until he is I, the rule, he has... then he can stop talking about systemic he's racism. Clarence he's... Thomas syndrome. But I do That's what... think yes. that he... He's one of these guys who, you know, he's like Clarence Thomas black Republican who believes in pulling yourself by your bootstraps, rather than, to me, understanding the systemic racism that African Americans face in this country and other minorities. He doesn't get it. After smears like that, Tim Scott had enough, deciding to challenge the ladies face-to-face, -face, minus Joy Behar. I'm the exception, right? You're the exception. Maybe even Miss Whoopi Goldberg is the exception. Why I'm on the show is because of the comments that were made, frankly, on this show, that the only way for a young African-American kid to be successful in this country is to be the exception and not the rule. That is a dangerous, offensive, disgusting message to send to our young people today. This and 50 percent of, of, of the folks get, in our community get 13 percent of the population. You had a chance to ask the question. I know that I've watched mm -hmm. you on the show that you like people to be deferential and respectful, so I'm going to do the that same thing. That is true. That was me That's, talking to you, okay. so I'd love, I'm, I'm to, I'd love that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to lay, <laughs> Shall I come here, so, next to her? Come on over here. Come on over here. <laughs> <laughs> only one black senator <laughs> out of 50. We're, 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 we're talking about progress. The right. so, there's only two on the other side. There's only two on the other side. Hi, we're back. Oh, <laughs> we're arguing over here still. I apologize. <laughs> huh? So we were still arguing we're over here. All right. So that happened this morning. Greg, one of the things that Tim Scott said, the reason he went is what I recall you reacting to when the interview or when the view was first talking about it, about this exception versus the rule. And I remember your reaction at the time. I think he had a similar one. And that's what he really wanted to go on and talk about. You, there's, an, there's an interesting kind of ego play there with Sunny because no one asks her why she is the exception. So how did you do it, Sonny? How did you, how were you able to do it and nobody else could? That's a great question. These, that, that table is the worst group of progressives ever assembled because no, they claim nothing has progressed while they're alive. That makes them the worst progress. Nothing's changed in 50 years or however long they've been on the planet. I think it's 80 with joy. Speaking of joy, how convenient that mm -hmm. it was her day off. Mm -hmm. I think she really hates black dudes. You know, remember her, uh, what did she say? She was lecturing black men on what it's like to be black, systemic racism, when her only black experience is blackface on Halloween, making her the Dylan Mulvaney of black men. So it's a credit to Tim Scott to go there. It was a lion's den, a lion's den with flatulence. Here's what's wrong with The View. I did The View 20 years ago, right? Why has it changed? You know, the, the five is worth, what, 13 years? We cannot turn into that. Mm -mm. And I've identified why they turned into that. Everybody there is incapable of observing themselves from the outside, hmm. right? They can't do the shoe on the other foot thing, which everybody, when you were a kid, taught you to do in cases of bullying or disagreements or strategic empathy mm -hmm. when you're talking about foreign policy. What is it like? Why is this person doing this? Are they acting irrationally? You can, they can't do that. They couldn't even do that with Tim Scott, which is why they have this thing. I call it the waiting for you to finish face. Have you ever been on a show where you're- uh, I see, do that face on this show. Yeah, when, when Jessica's talking, you have the waiting for you. It's basically what happens is their ears shut down and you're never gonna convince them. So they're just waiting for you to finish and then they regurgitate their ideologies because they can't see themselves. If they could actually see you, strategic empathy, maybe if I'd see Tim Scott's point of view, Tim Scott could see my point of view, and then your mind would change. The only people who can't change their minds are people with really big egos and insecurities. It's fun to be wrong. I'm wrong at least once every day. I enjoy it. They can enjoy it because their egos are too fragile. There was a column in the New York Times this weekend called Why the View Has Changed, and it was somebody who had watched The View for 20 years, and her reason, she thinks, is because they all just are desperate to agree with each other, mm -hmm. and even with the conservative that's on the show, they don't want to have an argument, which we have no problem with here. Mm -hmm. um, let me let's play one other thing for you, Jesse. This is about, well, about corporate and wokeism. Watch here. Do you have call for number one? <laughs> 
I think Disney and Ron have been in a combat zone for a number of months over what I thought was the right issue as it relates to our young kids and what they're being indoctrinated with. I thought he started off on the, wrong, on the right foot on that issue. It is 100%. Uh, 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 no, 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 not here. I'm sorry, sir. Do not boo. This is the view. We accept we don't have to believe everything people say, but you cannot boo people here, please. You cannot do it. Yeah. Please continue. <laughs> So that was a moment where they were trying to make sure that the audience was being nice. So Whoopi got a chance to play the high road? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whoopi? Okay. I have to find out where Joy Behar was. <laughs> where did she go on vacation? Because this would be like me calling Hunter a crackhead for two years. Hunter finally agrees to do the show and I'm off. Yeah. You can't do that, Joy. The only reason he's on is because of people like you who called him a race traitor. So I didn't really learn much from this. They both used each other. The View uses black conservatives to scare blacks into staying voting for Democrats. And then Scott uses The View to go on and raise money. That's fine. But Greg hit it. He comes out and he says, all this racial progress that the United States has made in the last 50 years, and they interrupt him and they say, well, what is that supposed to mean? We're just supposed to stop? <laughs> No! <laughs> We're not just supposed to stop making racial progress. We're supposed to continue. And that's what he said. He goes, We're always striving for a more perfect union. But they never had the conversation as to how you go about making a more perfect union. We never got into, well, should we be teaching white people to hate ourselves? Well, should we be handing out reparations? Should we just be hiring people because of their skin color, even though they're not qualified? We never got into that zone because all they do is scowl at the guy, interrupt him, and go to commercial. But the real question is, why won't the left acknowledge the racial progress? Why won't they right. just say, we've made a lot of progress over the last several years, and let's keep going for more? They want black people to continue to feel oppressed like they're on the brink of slavery in order to motivate them during elections. And then they want white people to continue to feel guilty so they're shamed into socialism. But Tim Scott was good. He just didn't get it over the end zone like I wanted him to. Joe Janine, you've been on The View. Um, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. How do you think your experience compared? Or I know you don't necessarily want to talk about yourself, but you've been there when it has been kind of hostile. You know, I have, I've been on The View for years when I was a DA. I, I actually co-hosted The View several times. And the last time I was on, it was like I didn't have a friend there. It was absolute hatred because of Donald Trump. Everything that I had talked about for years, all of the things that I had done representing, you know, crime victims, women as victims, all the good stuff that they were applauding, even the Robert Durst case, applause, applause. How dare you be friendly with Donald Trump? The hate on the part of the left is overwhelming. And there wasn't a happy ending for me on The View. I mean, it was like basically get out and, you know, the segment's over, you know. But I'm glad that, that Whoopi's gotten to the point where she can say, you know, we tolerate all views on The View. Don't Boo. She didn't say that uh, mm -hmm. a couple years ago. Right. But what I want to know about Joy Behar is this. If she has Mondays off, I mean, great job, right? If you could have the weekends and Mondays off, why didn't they change it so he was on on Tuesday? Good point. You know, I mean, why not come on on a day when she's going to be there and he can go right to her face? Look, this is all tribalism. We have made uh, uh, the racial progress. We've made all kinds of things. It's the Democrats who keep pulling us back. Think about Joe Biden right at the beginning of the administration. First thing he does with uh, Anthony Blinken, who, you know, should have been working on getting out of Afghanistan, but instead was too busy talking about how racist America was. They go to the U.N. and they say, tell us how racist we are to get confirmation from the U.N. that we are a racist country. Uh, but if you had an African-American like Tim Scott, who had the same background, you know, uh, poor, black, divorced, uh, mother worked 16 hours a day, he became a senator, he's now running for president, but he had a D in front of his name instead of an R. They would have been applauding him from, from the time yeah. he came on the scene. But that's not who they are. It's about tribalism. It's about not recognizing, hey, by the way, We've elected a black man president twice in the United States. We're not going backwards. We're going forward.
And I don't want to, you know, talk about X, Y, and Z and all the things we've done. But you know what? It is, it is pure base dog whistle tribalism that they're engaging in. Sonny Hostin, she said that, she, Tim Scott, in that first clip, there's only one black Republican senator. And he yeah. says there's only two on the other side. I don't know if she even knew that. That, I mean, if, if we're counting, that might not be the best argument to make. But, of course, you can comment on that or wrap us up. We did have three. Kamala Harris obviously went to be vice president. Um, but the numbers are not great on either side. They're even more disastrous on the Republican side. And I do think that the point that Sonny was trying to make about exceptions versus rules is an important one. It just had to be couched in the framework of accepting that there also has been tremendous progress. And then also owning the fact that majority of that progress has come on the Democratic side. Barack Obama was the Democratic president, right? We have a woman of color on the Supreme Court. She is a Democrat. Clarence Thomas, who's been called out, Joy Behar, named him obviously a conservative there. But in general, the progress in terms of our institutions reflecting the people that they govern is on the left side yeah, of things. Yeah, but the legal progress this, happened because of Republicans. What are you despite talking about? The, Demo yeah. the Democrats, they Stop. filibustered the Civil Rights Act. That's true. Oh, okay. I, it's just an, an absurd thing to look at the way that the parties are laid out today. You talk about that we can't talk about progress. I know that Robert Byrd was, was a Democrat and was a KKK master before that or whatever it is. If you look at the parties today, you see a much more diverse set of faces on the Democratic side than the Republican side. What is your opinion on that? I think it's because, and I, to your point about it's just straight tribalism, I think it's because the policies of the Democratic Party take into account the experiences of traditionally disenfranchised people. And that's what I wish Sonny had talked about. That's the same thing when people say, why wasn't Melania on the cover of every magazine? Why is um, Casey DeSantis, Walmart, Barbie, or whatever they called her, which I, I think is awful. The truth is that Democrat policies take into account the experience of women in this country. I mean, I was looking at the Fortune 500 CEOs. Now it's 10% women. That's a huge achievement. I will look the glowing articles about that, but it's still only 10%. And I'm not saying it has to be parity. I don't want a job that I don't deserve. But there are definitely more than 10% qualified not, women to do that. But it's not look just that. Look at the wage that. gap. It's it, not just that, Jessica. Yes, it's educational no, no, attainment, no. Well, which is I, another way I, that uh, people are held back in this country. There's a lot of people that aren't Republicans because they're told that the Republicans are against them when Republicans are giving them a message like Tim Scott does, which is, come here, you're going to have more opportunity in a place like Florida than you will in D.C. or Chicago. Or, or Chicago. Mm -hmm. But whatever a black man says something like that, the Democrats call him an Uncle Tom. So I think that there's a message that is, that's fairly effective from the Democrats that keeps blacks from considering another way out. I think that that's actually really a, a bit obnoxious, frankly, to treat Democratic voters like they don't know enough to listen to, Tom, to Tim Scott. I'm just using their words. Well, I'm just no, using the, they, the view. The view have, denigrates well, look, every black conservative. Look at the Clarence candidates. Thomas. Look at the candidates on the Republican Party. side Party. running for president. We've got two African Americans. We've got two we Indian have a sitting Americans. President. And yet, uh, well, I'm glad we have a sitting president. Right. So that's well, we don't have other but, candidates yeah, right now. Yeah. Well, that's but because, we have the black the moment, guy. because they won't allow them. The moment you say this is no longer a racist country. Country, a lot of people who make money off saying it's That's a racist right. country are out of work. That's right. All right, more to Jessica. come. Jessica. Senator Tim Scott oh, will be on Hannity later tonight to talk about his battle with The View and the 2024 race, so don't miss that at 9 p.m. Eastern. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.